Welcome to Shannon's Club TV, where today we're celebrating our 50th episode. In previous shows, we've looked at a huge range of classics on Australian roads and racetracks. You can catch up on every episode on the Shannon's Club website, which is free to join. For today's special edition, we've tracked down a rare owner's example of our feature car. So let's kick off our 50th with the car which proved that Ford's Australian Outpost could stand on its own in designing unique vehicles for one of the toughest countries in the world, the XA Falcon. The 1972 XA was easily the most Australian Falcon up to that time. When the decision was taken in Detroit early in 1968 to drop the Falcon, three senior Australian stylists flew to the States to begin work on the successor to the highly popular XY. Jack Telnak, Brian Rossi and Alan Jackson had to collaborate with their US counterparts but got their way in the end. The Americans had suggested a shrunken version of the Fairlane Torino, but the Aussies insisted on starting with a clean sheet of paper. They gave us the uniquely Australian XA Falcon. Ford President Seaman Bunky Nudson was so impressed with the Australian's design that he reportedly told local managing director Bill Burke to go out and build yourself a design centre near head office. It was Burke who conceived the 70,000 mile durability run that got the XP Falcon off to a racing start. Mark, given the motorsport success of earlier Falcons, yeah from the XR to the XY, the new XA really did have big wheels to fill, didn't it? Yeah, it sure had a lot to live up to. I mean, you're starting back with the XR GT. Won Bathurst in 1967, started the whole Australian muscle car war. Then we had those fantastic GDHO Falcons, three phases through XW, XY, two Bathurst victories, a heap of other wins. I mean, that was a lot to live up to, but Ford was well and truly up to the challenge when you know what they had in mind for the Phase 4 and Phase 5, which I'll get to a little bit later on. The XA was one of the cleverest Falcons ever. Its unique design, built on the Mustang bred theme established by its XR XY predecessors, but offered the perfect compromise between the Elephantine VH Valiant and the rather soft HQ Holden. The XA was elegant but purposeful, achieving its highest expression in the guise of three Brambles Red racing GTHO Phase 4s and one Calypso Green pre-production car. Its aircraft theme cockpit was more impressive than any of its main rivals, P76 included. The six-cylinder and V8 engines were generally better than the HQs and so was the handling. I especially remember a wild Violet 250 2V four-speed sedan I almost bought, lacking only cash. Naturally, there were utes, vans, wagons and fair lanes, plus the first hard top since XP and late in the range, the LTD and Landau. Ford Australia's advertising line for the XA was one of the best in Australian automotive history, the great Australian road car. Mark, having driven one of those racing phase fours, mm. I just can't help but think that the line really should have been XA Falcon, the great Australian road and track. Car. Yeah, exactly. Particularly when you know what Ford was planning for its XA Bathurst attack. The XA Falcon GTHO Phase 4, based on the XA GT sedan, would have been the greatest high performance Falcon of them all. But a political road safety campaign ensured it never competed in the big 500 mile race at Bathurst it was designed to win. The infamous supercar scare of 1972 forced Ford to cancel its Phase 4 production run of 200 cars. Arch rival Holden dumped similar plans for a V8 engine Tirana XU1 and Chrysler cancelled its RT Charger program. Motorsport's governing body CAMS also drafted new rules to eliminate the need for car makers to produce these race cars for the road. And with that went the Bathurst supercars. The stillborn Phase 4 was designed to be the fastest, safest, best handling and most refined of the four phases of GTHO development, with a theoretical top speed in excess of 260 km an hour. A more streamlined body, a tougher and more powerful version of the 5.8 litre V8 engine, 
wide track suspension and improved brake cooling and handling thanks to new globe alloy wheels and wider low profile tyres. A genuine Aussie supercar in every dimension. John, you're one of very few people in Australia, indeed the world, to have driven one of those four phase fours before Ford had to shut the program down. What are your memories of that car? Well, the overwhelming impression was how refined it was oh. for a car that had, had enormous performance potential, which reminds me of the story Howard Marsden told me. When the standard XAGT came out, journalists wouldn't believe it was as quick as the XYGT, so he had to stage a demonstration <laughs> yeah. down the quarter mile. Yep. And of course, the XA was as quick as the XY. The difference was it was much more refined mm. and much quieter, made its way through the air more graciously. Now, John, I believe one of those phase fours, the one you drove, was one of the race cars that was being prepared for Bathurst. One of just three cars. Mm. So to drive that, even back then, it felt like a very privileged thing. You know, to drive a car that was almost ready to take its place on the grid, and of which only four were built, and three of them were hand-built race cars. Mm. That was a fantastic privilege. And just, I mean, you talk about ready for the track. I mean, the car still had its roll, roll cage, cage in it, yeah. the big tank. I Absolutely. mean, that was ready to roll. Yes, and the Brambles Red was a unique colour, slightly different from Vermilion 5 for oh, the sponsor. Yeah, yeah, would have been quite a car. Yes. The XAGT two-door hardtop was earmarked to become the stillborn Phase 5. In many ways, the coupe did continue the HO's racing heritage, albeit in a different form as new Group C rules for 1973 allowed for limited modifications to improve performance and durability in racing. Numerous Phase 4 parts were put to good use in the Group C hardtops, which had wider tyres and better aerodynamics than the previous XY model. The hardtops also gained approval to run rear disc brakes just in time for Bathurst in 1973, thanks to the four-wheel disc Landau Coupe being accepted as a luxurious variant of the GT hardtop. Alan Moffat and Pete Gagan won the all-important Hardy Ferrado 1000 in a factory-ended XAGT in 1973, before privateers John Goss and Kevin Bartlett won the great race again in 1974, making the XA the only Falcon GT model to win two Bathurst crowns. Other great episodes of Shannon's Club TV are available to view anytime on the club website. My name's John and this is my 1972 GT Falcon Coupe. I've owned the car about 10 years. Uh, I did a full restoration on it a few years ago. I did a, a, a quite a bit of the work on it in the assembly, but of course I had the paint done professionally, the motor done professionally as well. But it's a labour of love. You spend some money on these things and you hope to get it back over the years. The XA range was the first Australian design range. The XY, of course, which had a brilliant reputation, the XA followed on with largely the same mechanicals, but a totally different volume. There's a number of American influences within the design of this car. There's also a lot of Australian built as well. The rear uh, quarter panels were widened for race use. I guess hence that's why it's got such a cachet. This particular car is one of three in shadow grey, so only a few were built. And that's one of the beauties of the XA range. There was a lot of different colours. This one is back to factory, except of course for the width of the wheels, which are a little bit wider than usual. It gives it that better stance, I felt, on the road. Under the bonnet, we've got the normal um, carburetor, the four barrel. It's a 351 cubic inch. Which they all were, of course, in the GT models. Uh, and this one, of course, runs through a uh, FMX Auto. This particular car is a heavily optioned car. It, in fact, came with electric windows, which was one of the first models to come with electric windows. And it's air conditioned as well. My favourite feature of the car, it certainly has a lovely rumble uh, as you drive along. It's not really a race of this one, it was built more for touring with all the options, but it, uh, it's lovely to take it out on a Sunday morning and, and hear it cruising out on the highway. I've always been a Ford man, I always loved Fords. My grandfather actually built me a billy cart and painted in Moffat's colours, which I think also cemented the idea of this. Uh, I think it was the uh, 1973 Bathurst that convinced me this might be the car for me. 
My favourite memory with this car, well, as soon as I'd restored it, I actually took it to Bathurst. I'd been invited to do a lap of Bathurst on race day, uh, and it just happened to be right behind John Goss. John Goss went very, very fast. He'd let all the other cars go in the parade, and he was going to have some fun in his race car. Uh, I had to keep the pedal to the metal to try and keep up with him, which was great. We got to do Bathurst at a fairly quick pace and really enjoyed every minute of it. It's quite a scary track. My plans with the car, my plan is to keep it for as long as possible uh, whilst I'm enjoying it, just to use it for club runs and Sunday mornings and things like that. It's great fun and I don't have any plans to part with it. Well, Tiny Hanson from the Shannon's Auctions team joins us for Hammer Time. Welcome to the show, mate. Thanks, Mark. It's good to be here. The mm -hmm. XA Falcon, it just, it's so long ago now that car was new, but you'd hardly ever see them now. No, on the contrary. There's still a lot of XA Falcons getting around out there. A lot of big in the clubs, a lot of GTs, a lot of standard Falcons as well. And do you get a lot of them coming through? GT hardtops in more or less original condition? We do. We have had GT hardtops and four doors coming through the auction department in mm -hmm. the last 12 months or so. Tiny, the XA was a big range. We had the, the hard top on the sedan, but you had the wagon, of course, then we had the commercials, utes, panel vans, I mean, and the ZF Fairlane. I mean, this is a huge range of cars. Where does the Fairlane fit into all of that? Well, the Fairlanes are actually getting quite desirable, Mark. Um, most of the people who bought Fairlanes back in the day were a little bit more affluent than the standard buyer, so therefore they had a garage to put them in, and so that means the Fairlane has been looked after a little bit better than a lot of the sedans that were left outside. Mm. So a good Fairlane these days, a 302 Fairlanes, very desirable car. But what about the commercials? I mean, I love that XA ute. It's one of the most stylish utes I've ever seen. But Absolutely. Most, they were driven into the ground, weren't they? Well, they were, they were built for work. Mm. A lot of them were used on farms, etc., left outside, in the barn, whatever, and mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, you can really see that coupe utility look, can't you, Mark? Oh, definitely. In the, the XA Ute, it's really like a sports car, anticipating a trend much later in the century where Utes, XR8 Utes and SS Utes, they're mm. Australia's new sports cars. Well, the XA Ute shared the same door as the XA That's right. Coupe. The hard top, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, no, no, door, no window frame around it, just a window that wound up onto the car itself. So, yeah. Very stylish for a commercial. Very stylish, yeah. Yeah. Practical classic, though. I imagine, like, there must be so many mechanical parts available for these. A lot of mechanical parts available. Some of the, um, uh, the GT shops around the country will have almost every aftermarket part for that, that particular model, from headlights to headlight switches, blinkers, whatever you need, it, it's available. And we hear a lot about the V8 models, the GTs and the upmarket Fairmonts, but what about the base model Falcons? They're really rare, aren't they? Well, yeah, a good base model Falcons very hard to find, because most of them were driven into the ground and then just wrecked and forgotten, taken to the tip in the day. So to find a good survivor, very, very difficult. At the other end of the scale, Tiny, the uh, LTD and Landau, which mm. came out late in the life of mm. the XA, how are they faring value-wise? Very well, especially the Landau. Landau is mm. very, very desirable, being the two-door LTD as such. Yeah. Very nice car. And what would you predict about the future values? Do you think they're going to keep going up, or do you think they're plateauing? What no, you, I, think, I think they'll go up. For mm. sure, because they are getting rarer and rarer. They're not making any more. No, so, you know, not the last time we looked. No. It's not as if you can go out and, and pick and choose a colour. You just have to buy what's available on the market. Yeah, yeah. it's always going to be a desirable classic. Isn't for sure. It? Yes. And Australian built classic too. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks for joining us, Tiny. No problem. Thanks, Enjoy. Tiny. And remember, if you want to keep up to date with all the latest Shannon's auctions news, find it on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like a memorable image of the XA Falcon in competition, visit autopix.com.au. John, looking back at the XA Falcon, you know, an amazing car. It really was the time when Ford US headquarters said, you guys can do it on your own. Well, Australians had to do it on their own mm. because the Falcon was dead in America. Yep. And it did show great faith by the head office in letting Ford Australia go ahead and do the car, which became in every sense the great Australian road car. Mm. It was a totally Australian piece of work and it really meant not just Ford Australia, but the whole car industry had expanded to come of age. Mm. And it happened in a very short time frame. If you think about model development in those days, those guys would have been starting on the XA in about 67, 68. That was like within 10 years of Falcon going on sale here. Very, very short time frames. They learned very quickly, didn't 1968, they? 1968, yeah. they went to America and started on it. Yeah, mm. absolutely. They did learn quickly and they worked quickly yeah. and hard. Very significant car. Yeah. Mm. We hope you've enjoyed this look back at the Great Australian Road Car and we'll catch you next time on Shannon's Club TV.